In every generation, there have been revivals, massive moves of the spirit that changed the course of history. In every revival, there were believers like you who chose to answer the call to become the one in their generation. Discover your call to be the one in your generation. We're about to take you face to face with history. Hi everyone, welcome to Revival Radio TV. I'm your host, Gene Bailey. All right, so here we are, week four of my time with Brother Copeland and Jerry Savelle. Listen, I know that you've enjoyed this. In fact, we're gonna wrap it up today. You know, history lets you have 2020 vision when you see what works and what doesn't. It's easy to look back, isn't it? When God told Jerry Savelle to launch into his own ministry, you're gonna find out today what happened. It might surprise you. In fact, the producers of this show pulled some rare photos from the KCM archive so we could get some inside stories from Brother Copeland and Jerry Savelle. They didn't know they were coming, so you wanna watch. So come along with me as we hear what they had to say. You have to transcend the human mind and go out in a place where there's no time nor distance. Amen. And you tap into the, 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 the greatness of God. Yeah. And inside every born again believer, there's greatness. Yes. And inside of every Holy Ghost baptized believer, there is a method of stepping out into the, the known and the unknown, known to God, unknown to us, but you trust him. And you go out into that place, praise God. And just get out there so far, you might not come back. Amen. 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 That yeah. That sounds good to me, doesn't it, you? Uh, it does. Uh, oh, Gene, I'm the hungriest man on this oh, planet, man. brother. And I'm, I'm telling you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's good. That's good. And it's, Praise God. Do we need, and, we, and I agree with you, Brother Jerry, about this latter rain. Just like we're hearing the rain hit the roof here. Yeah. Yes, sir. The rain is here. Yeah. It's coming. We'll do that. And Thank what you. did he say is the way to get it? Pray. Pray. Pray yeah. ye for the latter rain. That's right. Pray for there's, the no, there's no move of God without prayer. Amen. Christian failure is first of all a prayer failure. Yeah. Mm. It all comes back to that. It all yeah. comes back. Wow. That's Pray and faint. First of all, remember this? Yeah. The apostle Paul wrote to Timothy, what did he say? First of all, pray. That's right. Yeah. For all men, mm -hmm. kings, and all that are in authority, That's right. that the church live in peace and honesty and godliness. For this is good in the sight of God our Savior, yes. who gave himself as a ransom for all to be testified of due time. You can't get the testimony till after you do the praying. Yeah. Amen. Praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And God apparently me. it is not an option. Apparently. <laughs> no, it is. Pray and faint not. That's so right. you don't ever quit praying. No. Uh -uh. Prayer without ceasing, Paul said. Yeah. 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 You can't do that except in tongues. Yeah. That's right. That's right. You can pray your mind without, runs out, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, you can pray without ceasing, man. You can be standing in a grocery store line, standing there pray, praying on, just, just yeah, silently to yourself. You know, it seems like you know, I'm, I'm just a little bit younger than you. And uh, it seems like, and I grew up charismatic renewal and the baptism in the Holy Spirit. And my family, we got kicked out of church because we believed the baptism <laughs> of the Holy Spirit was for today, you know, and all that. But it seemed like we almost lost it. And Brother Hagen, I remember him, I saw it on the video, you know, that where he talked about, if we're not careful, we're going to lose yeah. it in this yeah. generation. Yeah. Yeah. And I never thought we would be at that place. I've taught you faith through my word and permitted you to go through certain experiences. And you've learned faith through my word and by experience. Now go teach my people what I've taught you. Way back in May of 1950, he said that to me. Now in more recent time, the Lord said to me, there is a move of the spirit that's going to be lost to this generation unless you teach them. Because, see, we knew the word all right, but we knew very little 
about really the move of the Spirit of God. You have to teach it to every generation. Yeah. And you have is to go back to the fundamentals. Is that where we fail? We you stop teaching? You have to go it? back to the fundamentals. Yeah. And let me show you what the fundamentals are. Yeah. Gene, this is a cup. <laughs> yes. Yeah. You have to go back that far. Just like a coach at a football yes, team. Yes, sir. Yeah. Vince Lombardi. Yeah. Had a losing season. Boy, Vince Lombardi don't have losing yeah. season. And he, the next, the next, uh, when they came back to start the next season, right. he, that's the way he started. He said, gentlemen, and these guys are the best in, in, in the business. Yeah. This is a football. Yeah. Made about half of them mad. He went back to the very basic of the basic of the basic fundamentals. Never lost anymore. Amen. I saw something just the other day where one of his players back, well, Bart Starr just recently passed away. Yeah, yeah, he did. And uh, this one guy said, what normally would have taught most coaches 30 minutes to cover, Vince Lombardi would spend six hours on Yeah. Mm. Yeah, that's, that's the key. Wow. That's yeah. good. You can't ever can't assume it. that everybody knows yeah. what you're talking about. Yeah, and, and and not rush it. It has to be take it back to the very fundamentals of faith. Mm. Yeah, it's a spiritual force, not born of the mind. It's born of this born again human spirit, and it. I don't care if you've been living and walking by faith and making faith confessions every day of your life for 45 years. It's time to go back and renew the basics because you, you have a tendency to let stuff slip. Amen. Particularly in prayer. Amen. And the laws that govern prayer. That's good. Well, I got a little, some pictures here I want to show you. Now here's, here's you with a plane. <laughs> that's the first that's airplane. the sky lane that's the little sky lane the very first airplane we had is too small when we got it but it yeah. was it, yeah. it was the very first one and that's at the Sphinx airport where I where I bought it yeah. that's the one you flew me over to this property in. yes sir and yeah. he would do touch and goes out here at this runway yeah before and we he, ever owned yeah before you owned it yeah. this was like 1971 yeah or two and we'd do a touch and go out here had scatter the cattle off the runway first. Yeah. And then he'd say to me, you hear me saying it? One day I'm going to own this place. We'll have our headquarters here. That was in 69. Yeah. Well, I came in 70, 71. Yeah. But you wow. were doing me in that, you were flying me over here in that plane yeah. saying that then. Man, one of these days I'm going to own this place. <laughs> yeah, there you go. And we're sitting on it right now. Here is, I love this picture. Now this is, maybe you can tell us where this meeting was at. Both of you in the picture. That's Bill Green. That's yes, Bill it Green is. Yes, Kansas. it is. Yes, and it is. That's who that is. I'm thinking. I'm thinking that was up in Omaha. It, yeah. <laughs> we were. We, we were. We had the meeting in a brand new Hilton hotel. Right. And we rented the ballroom. It was the only place there big enough, and we were going to be there 21 days. Mm. And. <laughs> There was a guy that really was just really excited and turned on to God. Well, you know, the, um, what's the name of the railroad? The, um, Western Pacific, I think. No, Union Pacific. Union, Union Pacific. Pacific Railroad. And their headquarters were, were there. Mm -hmm. And they had a bunch of old, old throwaway cars out there and there's a bunch of homeless people living in those cars. That's where I was going witnessing after the service. Yeah, and that's right. Yeah. yeah, and I got California shorty shades. Yeah, same. you did. <laughs> <laughs> and these guys, I mean, alcoholics, you could smell them when they walked in the door, bless their heart. And uh, I'm the one who brought them in there. <laughs> <laughs> so they're sitting out in the lobby waiting for the meeting to start. This is a brand new Hilton Hotel, yeah. man. And they came around and, and they said, uh, Mr. Copeland, um, is there anything you can do to <laughs> guide those people to another part of the hotel? I said, no, I can't. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so, man, and the power of God hit that place. People just stacking up like cardwood up on yeah. the floor. They yeah. they, just before anybody would ever fall out on the power in our ministry. <laughs> so 
this one guy got, got born again and got filled with the Spirit of God and oh, uh, he was so thrilled. He was so thrilled. And, and I'm, I'm just preaching, I was preaching what happened from the cross to the throne, the absolute defeat and destruction of Satan in the middle of hell. I'm preaching that thing, man. And he got so excited. He stand up right in the middle, right in the middle of it. And he said, give him hell, preacher. The Irishman is still with you. And then he realized what he said and he put his hands over his mouth. Well, they were there and they had a, a, a revolving door in the front of that hotel, you know, and everybody's walking out and Dale walked out. And uh, he came up in the prayer line and I said, Bill, what do you need? You remembered my name. He never did tell me what he needed. He just, he, it, it was so overwhelmed with the whole thing. And we walked out there. They, they were coming out. And this guy coming through the revolving door right behind him. Ah, oh, Copeland's a fake. All the rest of them are fakes. So Bill just waited till he got through the door and just decked him. Yeah. <laughs> Put him on the sidewalk, sat down on him and said, ain't nobody talks about my preacher like that. <laughs> wow. Wow. It was exciting days. I yeah. bet. I mean, you week. were telling me at, at the house the other day about soul winning, and you were talking about Jerry Savelle here in Jacksonville, Florida. Yeah. I was, we were preaching two services a day there in the Beaches Auditorium. That was my first meeting with you. Okay. And um, he he just he met us out there. And Jerry was helping and, and doing everything that he needed to do in the meeting. Between the morning and evening services, he'd go out on the beach and, and witness and get people born again. We were there 21 days. Bring him into the meeting. And uh, we had we had 500 people get born again in the meetings. He matched us on the beaches. Mm. And he was baptizing them in the ocean. One time, I don't remember where this was. Maybe this was Omaha. There's a guy who had a hard seizure right out in the middle of the street. It was Omaha, yeah. And Jerry was standing there on the corner. And boy, everybody got away from the guy, you know. I mean, he's having a hard seizure right in the middle of the street. Right downtown Omaha. And Jerry just went right out there and just grabbed him by the hair of the head and cast the devil out of him before the ambulance could get there. Got him saved. Well, the ambulance drove up and <laughs> put the guy in the ambulance and Jerry was standing there and the guy was going, Jesus, Jesus, <laughs> Jesus. The guy's completely delivered in wow. the back of the ambulance and he's, by, and he's waving by to Jerry and just saying, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Yeah. Well, it's funny, though, when I knelt down, he fell right out in the middle of the street, and he's just jerking, you know, having a seizure. When I screamed, in the name of Jesus, you come out of him. Now, there was a crowd. People got out of their cars. They're circled around him. You ought to have seen them scatter when I, I, bet they they did. <laughs> I left alone, boy. I bet they did. Oh, praise God, Gene. Yeah, okay, so do you remember this place? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. It was. <laughs> and then that was quickly followed by this place. Yeah, those are different offices. That's, that's the White Settlement area. Yeah. And this was Berry Street. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah, this one came before that. Mm -hmm. This was where the. <laughs> this was, was this, this was where the yeah. hallway was so yeah, skinny. The hallway was my office. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he, was, he was making tapes out in the hallway. Yeah. And you had to just kind of skinny by for the room enough to get. Let's see. Uh, it's Kenneth and Gloria, granddad, one uh, secretary and one bookkeeper. Yeah. And yeah. me. So if the bookkeeper or granddad or the secretary had to go to the bathroom, I had to leave my hallway because <laughs> the bathroom was right at the end and they couldn't squeeze by me. Oh, man. All right. Now, then there's this one in November of 72. It's yeah. Been... Yeah. Now, that's this that... picture is when I had taken it over. Yeah. That's yeah. my dad's truck out front. Now, this was, this was the first really nice office yeah. we had. We built this building. Yeah. And it, it was really it was. nice. And then when, when we moved, Jerry took it over. I took it. Yeah. And then we added another section on the back of it where I had Overcoming Faith Center. Yeah. Where I had about 500 Jerry people came in. in to me. He said, uh, the Lord's calling me out 
in my own ministry. Well, I, I, I knew that. I, I knew his time. But then he did something that, that I never heard of anybody doing. He said, I want you to cut off my salary. Oh. He said, I'm going to have to learn to live without that salary. He said, let's just do it now. While you're here to help me and teach me what to do here. And I said, Jerry, you no. Nah. He said, let's do that. And so, of course, we we did. <laughs> and his income went up. <laughs> well, it's something like double, I think. And, and he said, I should have done this a long time ago. <laughs> the month of December, that was 1973. Really? <laughs> and the month of December, before I was going to leave at the end of that year, December 31st, that one month I brought, God bless me, because I wasn't out preaching I was with you. Yeah. And God blessed me with more money in that one month than I had made the previous nine months working with Kenneth yeah. Copeland Evangelistic wow. Associate. Yeah. Wow. Plus, he supplied me with offices, fully furnished, everything was paid for, and booked for six months for preaching. Yes, sir. <laughs> Man. Yes, sir. I mean, so you were thinking, I should have done this earlier. Yeah. <laughs> Faith in God. Uh, Faith in God. Not faith. See, working Kenneth with Copeland him. Ministry, right. Faith in God. Working with him, that was my Bible school. Yeah. That yeah. was my Bible school. That's where I learned faith. Yeah. yeah. This last one is a, we searched high and low. Gloria in my wedding picture. This is your wedding picture. But mm -hmm. here's, tell me about this guy. Oh, Joe Stewart. Oh, God love him. I was, uh, I had gone by Central Flying Service in Little Rock looking for a job. Mm -hmm. And I had my, my flying time was low enough that, that, of course, I had a commercial ticket and all that, but, um, but I had put on my application that I had sales experience. I was a low timer in, in time and experience, but. And, and this, this was uh, before I had gotten born again. Hmm. And uh, Gloria and I hadn't been married but just a short time. So no, it was before we got married. And I went back there and Joe was general manager and his father-in-law owned Central Flying Service. And I just thought, well, I'm gonna go back by there. So I went in and talked to Joe. He said, Kenneth, he talked to me about this. And then he said, uh, I really don't know why I'm doing this, but he said, we need somebody here in some sales experience. Come to find out, He's a born-again Southern Baptist uh, preacher with a heart for the mission field. Oh, he wanted to go to the mission field so bad. And he applied to the Southern Baptist Mission Board. They said, okay, you need this and you need this and, and, and all of all this, this school part of it. And so in the meantime, his dad-in-law taught him how to fly so he could use that in the mission field. And, he had all of his ratings and everything, good part. And so he went back down and said, I'm ready to go. They said, no, you're too old. Well, why didn't you tell me that before you, all of this? Anyway, then years later, I was praying one morning in the spirit and I got Joe on my heart and I thought, what? So I called his mother and I said, where can I get a hold of Joe? Well, Kenneth, she told me, you know, where he gave me his phone number and I called him. And uh, I said, Joe, tell me what you're doing. Well, Kenneth, he said, we're, <laughs> you know, the Jesus film in all the different languages. He got the Jesus film in Spanish. And out in what they call the Rancho Grandes, out there across the border, and it's nothing but just buck brush, just as right. far as you can see. And he said, I just get my pickup and get a loudspeaker, cinema noche, cinema noche. So it's a movie tonight. Yeah. It's as soon as the sun go down. And he said, I have a screen and a projector. And he said, man, he said, we will liable to have as many as 100, 150 people following that pickup. Mm -hmm. And he said, all of them get saved. Wow. He said, we've been doing that and doing that and doing that. And he said, now I need some more equipment, man. <laughs> they came to the place where they were winning 
up to 30,000 people a year mm. in those bushes and in, their, in, in places like that in um, southern central Mexico. And so the ministry bought them another, and then we bought them a dually truck, and then, they, and then more, more equipment, and, and just kept on and kept on until Joe just was winning, just, I mean, just praise God, yeah. just winning thousands and tens of thousands of people. So see, it doesn't take, it, it, it doesn't take, it takes the calling. Right. And a man that won't quit. Yeah. Willing to do it. Just willing to do it. And he just Hunger kept doing God. it and kept doing it and kept doing it and kept doing it till the day he went home to be with the Lord. Oh, that was good. And he called me. He came to Southwest. And he said, Kenneth, now I believe in healing. He said, there's no question in my heart and mind about that. But he said, I'm not there. He said, I, 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 I just need more teaching on it and, and so forth and so on. And I said, well, praise God, Joe, I agree with you. He said, you agree with me? He said, I'm believing for a heart transplant. And he said, my heart's in really bad, bad condition. And he said, I, I need you to help him agree with me. I said, sure. So we agreed together and he supernaturally, this, it was just supernatural the way he got a heart. And he bled to death on the operating table. Mm. Oh. The devil got in there some way. Oh. Mm. And we still support his wife and family. They're still in the mission field. Wow. And they're still doing what they do in Mexico. Praise mm. God. That's crazy. After God. all these years. Yeah. And he is the man that married Gloria and me. Mm. That's awesome. Okay. This is an this is an in progress. Picture, maybe you maybe you recognize that place. Oh yeah, right glory up. to God. Hmm. Yes, sir. Yeah. My my my. Now this. Sits on fifteen hundred acre land. Uh -huh. I didn't have. I didn't have anything. And this is back in the 70s. Uh -huh. And I already knew, I su had a supernatural experience with, uh, uh, that, that I knew this was our property. There wasn't really any question about it. And I, I found out the man that owned it. And I got up one morning, I'm just standing there shaving, the Lord said, it's time to go see Mr. Pewitt. I didn't have any idea what to do or what to say. And the Lord said to me, he said, you go tell him. Now this, see, you gotta be sensitive to the spirit of God here. That I have need of that property. So that's when I had made an appointment with him. He was, a, he was 89 years old, he's a bachelor. And he was in oil and gas business. And he owned this property, he bought it out of the government. It was a, it was a, a Navy base during World War II. And so that's all I said to him. And he, he, he talked very slowly. He said, well, it's for sale. <laughs> but now before he said that, he sat in his rocking chair for about 20 minutes. And I'm sitting there. Now I learned to keep my mouth shut right. when I was with <laughs> Brother, Brother Roberts. Roberts. Yeah. And then he said, well, it's for sale. I said, uh, Mr. Pewitt, I don't have any money, but God will get it for me. Ah, it seemed like an hour and a half, you know. Right. And he said, come back to see me. <laughs> <laughs> so we made another appointment. Went back over there and he said, I'm going to see you boys through this. I said, Mr. Pewitt, another thing you need to know, I don't borrow money. I said, I don't believe it's right to mortgage another man's property to you. It belongs to Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> you come back to see me. <laughs> 
<laughs> but you can't just sit there and just go to talking and talking and talking and talking. He, he wouldn't have had anything to do with it. Yeah, sure. But, and the only way you're going to find these things out is praying in the Spirit of God. Mm -hmm. And well, the next time we went, he, he said, now I want you to bring, uh, bring board members or something and so forth with him. One of our board members in the real estate business. Our whole contract was one letter sized piece of paper. And uh, he said, uh, got anything against rent? <laughs> I said, no, sir. <laughs> and he said, all right, I'm going to rent the place to you. No interest in it. He said, and the Lord tells you to go someplace else. Give me two weeks notice and all is well. He said, now I'm dividing the property into four equal parts. And he said, you get one quarter paid for and I'll deed it to you. And he said, the, all your rent goes towards the last quarter. And so, and he said, now, can you write that contract just like I said it? And the Barry said, yeah. He said, okay, write that out there. And so he got done with writing it all out. And it was five million and five million and eighty thousand dollars, I believe. And he said, had me sign it. Then he handed it back to Barry and he said, Now write it again, exactly only take one million dollars off. I'm the first donor. Wow. Now in all of this, Mr. Pewitt hadn't smiled at me one time. Wow. All business, all business. So Barry rewrote it, handed it back down there to me, and I signed it and he signed it. And he got this big grin on his face and he slapped that table. He said, you're going to be bigger than Oral Roberts one of these days. Yeah. <laughs> and after the business is over with, man, he is shouting happy. Wow. Praying in the spirit, Gene. Wow. And that's the land we're on today. Wow. All I can say is wow. You know, do we still need to target our faith to start something that God lays on our hearts? Absolutely. It's amazing seeing the fruit from people who've targeted their faith like Brother Copeland has for over 50 years. What God did for him and Jerry, he can do for you. Your assignment may be completely different from theirs, but God has your plan and he wants to see you blessed and he wants to see fruitful results. Whether it's praying for someone you've never prayed for or stepping out in a project God wants you to do, he has a plan and he has the means to make it happen. That's where your faith comes in. But I wanna end today the way that you heard so many times before. God loves you, we love you, and Jesus is Lord. See you next time right here on Revival Radio TV.